Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. You go to buy a used car, and the used car salesman comes out, a big waxy mustache and eyebrows that hop up and down, and he says, nice looking car, isn't it? That's just you. I can just see you in that car. I say, how much? And he says, well, how much are you willing to pay for it? Well, I don't know. I'm just for something, you know, two or three thousand dollars. He says, you don't know how badly I want to sell that car to you. But I just don't think the manager is going to go for it. But I'll do my best, all right? He seems to be leaning your way, doesn't he? But somehow, as he walks into the manager's office, he starts to lean the other way, doesn't he? Of course, this is the fellow that makes his paychecks out. Isn't that right? You know what the word mediator means? A mediator between God and men? It's a Greek word that means he doesn't lean either way. Can you imagine that? The Lord Jesus doesn't favor God in the relationship. He's as much for you as he is for God. He doesn't lean either way. He represents us in heaven. He doesn't say, well, they are a bunch of rascals, I know. I know, Father, and I can appreciate that. He's for us. Who also makes intercession for us. Now, if we'd read earlier, we discovered that in verse 26, we have an intercessor in the heart, the Holy Spirit of God. And now we have an intercessor in the heavens, the Son of God. The Holy Spirit in the believer is looking after God's interests in us. And the Lord Jesus in heaven is looking after our interests with God. We're well looked after, aren't we? Now, says the apostle, it's a courtroom drama here. Suppose somebody did come forward with a charge. Imagine this. The judge is the one who wanted us, who set about to save us. And the defense lawyer is the one who died for us. How would you ever bring a charge in a court like that? When they ask for evidence, the Son of God steps forward and says, Well, yes, the charges you brought, they're all true. But they're all forgiven. I paid for them, you see. There's the evidence right there, right in my hand. The evidence that their sins are gone. Would you care to suggest that I haven't paid in full for every sin? That somehow my work is flawed? Well, then if it is, you'll have to come up against the God of the universe because he's the one who raised me from the dead. And if he raised me from the dead before every sin was paid for, then God was unjust in doing that, wasn't he? The wages of sin is death. But now every sin must have been paid in full. And the evidence is that God was satisfied and raised me from the dead and brought me to the highest place in the universe. And I stand here to represent these people. I intercede for them. I speak on their behalf. And I have here the very proof in my glorified, resurrected body that God was satisfied with the payment in full. There's nothing left to be said, is there? 